Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wood butchers. Hope you're doing good wherever you are. Hope you're making a mess, having some fun out in the shop. I had to add a better switch onto my router table. And because Rex the shop dog was chewing on the other one, my little foot activated switch. So this is what I've added. Follow along. I'm pretty sure this isn't perfect. It's not, you know, up to code uh, in every single place in the world. This is not a tutorial. This is just how I did it. If anything you see here helps you out, maybe like, subscribe a little bit. Let's try and grow this channel just a little bit more and uh, make some cooler videos. I got some neat stuff coming, uh, so uh, hopefully in the next uh, month or so, week or so, day or so, some other cool stuff's going to appear on here. I'll show you how I did this. Hey, good evening, wood butchers. So first project on the new uh, list of things to do, we are going to be trying to fit this switch onto the router table. I didn't realize something. That's a big honking switch. Now, again, I have a two and a half, three horsepower router in there. It pulls a lot of amps. And especially when you're running a big bit uh, for profiling, it's gonna need a lot of juice through there. So I got the good switch. It doesn't have a case with it. And the, here's the issue is that I couldn't find a case for this thing. So tootled off to the old Home Depot and I thought, okay, this will work. Thankfully I brought that with me and it's not deep enough. So I was able to find this, it's an extension. So this extension combined with that should be more than deep enough for the switch, which is good. But then looking at it, you need to use ring terminals. So I picked up a little box of ring terminals. Uh, they just barely fit. I think I may need to just shave the sides down just a little bit. A little weird sort of plastic sticky outy part next to the uh, screw there, but I'm sure I'll make that work somehow. Then I realized, well, this extension probably going to have some holes in it, so I need to plug the holes. I went and picked up some hole plugs. A couple came with the unit, but okay. Then I thought, well, I need some strain relief. So, okay, I'm going to grab some of these little guys. You see where I'm going with this? Me saving money? maybe didn't save me any money. The only thing that this is going to allow me to do is to get a plug uh, to the outlet without needing an extension cord. So I'm going to be able to make this a much more simple connection. Um, and I'm going to put the wires and everything else under a lot less strain. This I'm going to cut one end will be dangling outside the box oops to plug the router in the rest of it however length i need will uh, be cut to the correct bit i need and then wired into the box each of the wires is going to go through one of these guys to secure the wire so it doesn't pull out and we don't put any strain on the connections oh boy you know should have just bought the other part from, where was it? Lee Valley had them in stock. Everywhere else in Canada, I couldn't find them in stock. But after I bought all the stuff, I went, you know, I'm just going to check around. And sure enough, Lee Valley had them in stock. I could have picked it up today. But it's only got an 8-foot cord, and I needed about 10 feet. So saving money costs you more than just buying the dang thing off right. So anyways, let me tootle away on this and get some stuff figured out go from there so we're a couple days later and a few more gray hairs and i came up with a couple ideas number one this one had a grounding tab in the corner here don't need that it's all going to be working out okay itself so cut that off then i was trying to find screws the screws that came with it were just too short I figured I'd need just about two inches. So I was able to find 632 by two inch screws. I wasn't sure if they're gonna be big enough. So what I did then is get 632 nuts and some threaded rod. And I figured out if these little guys don't work, this will work. Uh, I could effectively weld that nut on the end of it and thread it in. 
it would function. Not optimally, but it would work. But thankfully, these are big enough, just barely. So my thought is I'm going to take this over to the big belt grinder, just take off the paint on the sides, just a little bit, just a titch, nothing major. Take the back side of this and take off a little bit so I have a little bit more give. And then I'm gonna glue those little buggers together with some of this stuff. I love this stuff. Simpson ISR 7030. This is what they use for uh, locally for attaching bus skins onto, you know, the big buses. We have two big bus manufacturers uh, in the city and uh, yeah, they use this stuff a lot. So I get it locally. It's good stuff. It's about seven bucks a tube, but it sticks like snot. I put the exterior skin of a utility trailer on with this stuff. It held up for 10 years that I had the trailer and unfortunately I sold it, but it was still going strong when I sold it and it will not come off. I've used this for a ton of things. Awesome. It's elastic. It's adhesive. It's watertight. Uh, I sealed the roof of my cargo trailer with it. Haven't had a leak. Love this stuff. Um, so if you can find it, uh, go for it. It expired in 2019. Hopefully it still works. Let me have a look at it. I'm going to get this all done up. Uh, I'll probably let it uh, dry overnight, clamp it up with some screws and then we're going to start putting it all together and getting this switch up and functional. I don't know where I'm going to mount it yet, but ah, bit by bit. I hope you can see it. I have ground all of those edges perfectly flat. Uh, I put the two of these things together. Let me flop them together. The big thing is with this ISR 7030, you do not want any grease on it. It has to be perfectly. So if you look at that, those line up absolutely perfect. I got them as flat as I could. So they are gonna be glued together. So I'm gonna glue them up, then show you how I got it all finished. So we're all done up now. I squeezed out and cleaned off all of the excess adhesive in there and just use the two screws to hold it all together and clamp it all together overnight. You can see there's a little bit of flash on the inside. That I'm not gonna worry about because nobody's gonna ever see that. And uh, so let's let this box set up. I'm gonna do solid wire there. I have some solid wire, solid wire underneath that lug. And then I'm going to do a pigtail onto the two grounds for the extension cord. And from the extension cord, I'm going to have to get a wire crimping tool and crimp on the lugs. Then Bob's your uncle, I'll be able to get it all together. When I put the um, cord on, I figured out that I could put one here and one here and the switch would be in the middle and the cord will loop down underneath and be all nice and uh, coordinated. And then I can use the two holes for these guys. So that's all working out really good. Now I'm just going to figure out how to mount it onto the router table. So let's go over the router table. I'm typically right-handed if I'm doing something. Uh, things are going to go that way across the table and I'll end up pushing it off and then using my right hand to turn it off. So somewhere around here, I'm going to have to put that switch. There's nothing underneath that I can attach it to. I don't really want to screw or glue anything to here because I just don't like doing that. But I'm thinking, since there's two bolts here, I have some plate aluminum. I might look at making up some type of attachment for that. I originally played with the idea of actually sandwiching the plate aluminum and gluing both of those two extensions together on the plate aluminum, but I gave that up. That would be too complex. And anyways, uh, it's going to percolate in my head for a day or so, and then I'll get back to you for the rest of it. But once I get the switch all wired up, it'll be good. The other thing I'm thinking of is instead of having to reach down here, I'm actually thinking of putting the switch up here. So I would switch in this area, maybe mount it underneath the rail or something. This I'm not too worried about if I have to mount something underneath. 
Again, options. Let me think on it. Hey, everybody. Okay, it's the next day. Everything's all done up. This is 100% fused. It's not moving anywhere. Tested it. Had the termite reef on it as hard as she could. Nothing moved. So, one big tip before you put the terminals on, maybe put the uh, cable through the grommet here, uh, the strain relief. Yeah, and maybe put the cap on first. Um, <clears throat> not always my smartest thing on a Saturday. Everything's sort of wired up. The terminals, I can't find my terminal crimping tool. I have no idea where it is. It's gone missing in action. I really don't want to run off and grab a new one. So basically I'm just using a set of pliers to kind of crimp each side, give a little bit of a, a loop down into it and give it a nice final crimp. I'm getting a good solid connection. I think it'll be fine. Uh, with all the COVID stuff, you know, there's so many limitations. I'm going to be standing in line for two hours. I'll do the best I can. I can always cut them off and recrimp them later. Anyways, let's work on this. I'll get the other side finished up and show you how the switch is wired in. Alrighty, so we're all wired up. Uh, I got the ring terminals in. Uh, it's all set up, good to go. I am going to do some testing with grounds and continuity. See how that all works out. And uh, we're going to go from there. I'm going to button it all up. The screws that came with it are, here they are, certainly not long enough. Now, the interesting thing is that these are 832s, and just about every housing I could find works off a 632. So, no matter what, I wasn't going to be able to use the original bolts anyways. So, I'll keep those as for something else, but the 2-inch uh, uh, 632s worked great. So, let me uh, toodle along, get some more done, and I'll show you what the final product looks like. Okay, all buttoned up, and interestingly enough, this plastic housing fits perfectly a little bit of encouragement there uh, into the bottom the top and the sides so this isn't gonna go anywhere it's nicely sealed up um, and if we look at it here that's how much extra thread I have on those two inch 632 bolts so more than enough to hold that down and hold it in place it's really solid once it's done so it's working good all right all finished all done all looking good I think it turned out really well. Um, for attachment, I opted for using that super heavy duty 3M VHB uh, double-sided tape. It is super strong stuff. I've had uh, clamps on this for a few hours, squishing it in, letting it really set. It ain't moving anywhere. Um, if there is an issue, I can always mechanically secure it down, but I think this will do good for now. I routed the wires down, strain release are working great. I used some zip ties to kind of clean up the wires and then the extension goes that way towards the IVAC switch I have way down there. Again, when I set up the shop, I wasn't quite sure where all the tools were gonna go. It's the best I could do right now, so that's all good. Um, it works great. Neat kind of thing is that because it's an extension cord with a lighted end down here, if uh, for whatever reason this switch is on and I'm going to plug the router in, I'm going to see the uh, light on the cord. So that's all good. Anyways, I like how it turned out. Um, easy to press. And connects right with my whole system. Works great, much better than that little foot uh, thingy you had on the floor because sometimes I'd be walking by, put my foot down or, you know, it, <clears throat> little Rexy would play with it and somehow it would end up over here and i go to get something, I'd step on it, boom, uh, router table's on. So this I think is more secure. It's a heavier duty, much heavier duty switch than the other one. This is good for like, you know, two plus horsepower saws. It's gonna do really well for this. Anyways, I hope this helps you, shows you how I got it. Again, the biggest thing is you need a switch. And for these big guys, you need the extension part, the box, and some strain reliefs. And, oh, and some plug covers. Go out there, make a mess, have some fun, fix up your shop. Uh, I'm hitting off project after project. Keep tuned, I got some neat stuff coming on. I have a neat uh, anemometer uh, 
I think just arrived soon or arriving. And I'm gonna do some tests on that uh, DeWalt vacuum. So let's see how that goes. One more project off the list. I love doing projects, but sometimes the tool chests just barf all over my work surfaces. Oh well, I guess I'll clean that up soon.